Hi, this is CB, and this is a quick tutorial about getting started with digital scrapbooking in Photoshop. I'm going to use CS2, Photoshop CS2 for Windows in this tutorial, but it's applicable if you're using CS3 or a Mac version or a little bit older version of Photoshop because the stuff we're going to cover in this tutorial is pretty much uh, works the same in any of these versions. So the first thing you're going to need to do is get a photo and a digital paper. You might be using Bridge to store your photos or Lightroom, ACDC. I use Photoshop Elements Organizer for my photos. But in this case I'm going to use the file browsing capabilities of Photoshop and get my stuff through that. So I'm going to go File and Open. And I have a folder already here to go. If not you could sit here and click that little down arrow and browse for stuff you need. But I'm going to pick a digital paper here that I've got and open it. And now I'm going to click a photo out of there and open it. One of my son, I'm move it out of the way here. The next thing we're going to do is talk about getting this photo over onto the digital paper. And there are several ways to do it. You can cut and paste by selecting the photo, going into edit, cut, and then copy rather and paste one of those things. I'm going to click and drag actually and there's two ways to even do that. The first thing is I'm going to select the move tool here. You can just click anywhere within the picture, hold the mouse button down, go over here, and let go of the mouse, and there it is, it's on there. I'm going to undo that by hitting Control and Z. If you're using a Mac, that's Command and Z. The next way, and I'm going to actually drag from the Layers palette. The reason I like to do that is because sometimes you may only want to drag a few layers of a file if you've got a multi-layered file over, and it's just a habit I get into is using the layers palette. So I'm going to click here, anywhere really on that layer would work, and of course there's only one layer on this file. Move over here, drag, let go of the mouse, and there it is. I don't need this photo anymore. It's already saved on my computer and I didn't make any changes to it, so I'm going to close it up because the fewer files you have open at one time, the better. The next thing to talk about is the layers palette and how your layers are arranged over here is going to affect what you see on the screen. Right now we have a photo and a digital paper and the photo is on top of the digital paper. If you go over to the layers palette here, this is considered the top of the layers palette. Down here is the bottom. And so right now we have a photo on top of this digital paper. I'm going to unlock this background. It's la labeled as background with a little lock sign here. When you open a JPEG, that's pretty much standard how every one of them is going to be one layer. It'll say background, it'll be locked. So I can't move the order of this around until I unlock this layer and I do that by double clicking in this layer. The new layer dialog comes up. I'm going to go ahead and let it be called layer 0. Hit OK. And now actually I can click here and drag and let go right below that. And now it looks like the photo is gone. If you look over here it's not actually gone. You can see the bounding box for the photo and you can see the thumbnail for the photo. But because the digital paper is on the top layer now and it's larger than this photo it looks like it's disappeared. I'm going to move this back up to the top and we'll demonstrate with one more thing. I'm going to do a text layer and when I click in here with this text tool it automatically adds a layer to the layers palette. Test of text. And I'll actually I can move it here to get we can see it better and click OK. And now we have three layers in the layers palette. We have the text layer which is on top which is why you can read the entire line of text. My son's photo is next and then the digital paper. If I click and drag below this photo now some of the the text is obscured by the photo. And that's how the order of things here is going to affect how your layout looks. The last thing to talk about is saving your work. When you're working with layers I would suggest strongly that at some point you're going to want to save your file as a PSD file. This keeps all your layers intact and will allow you to close your file up, open it the file again at a later date and you'll have every one of these layers again and you can even oh here I'm going to drag this back to the top there you can even go in and edit your text at any time just like in this case I'm going to double click this T to highlight all the text and hit test and just say I wanted to change that this is helpful if you make typos like I have been known to do and you upload your layout somewhere and then you see a typo and have to come back and make a change. It's very easy to do when you have your layers all intact like this. But of course you will need to save as a JPEG also. Save another copy of your layout as a JPEG which will make it a flat file meaning there will be one layer with a little lock sign again if you were to open it up in Windows and you'll see 
that it will not be editable the way it's editable when you have all the layers. So that's a little tutorial about getting started with Photoshop, and I hope you feel a little bit more comfortable about the idea of scrapping with Photoshop. And this is CB, and thanks for watching.